Welcome. It's a, it's a small group, but you look very funny from here. You must be very enthusiastic. So uh, I'm very hopeful that this is going to be a very successful challenge. And uh, I brought my, uh, my colleague, Sachin, here. He will take part of the presentation. He will do the technical part. I will, please sit here, join us. We're on like one big family here. So two out of, maybe three groups. Oh. This is great. Okay. Um, this is basically, it's going to be a short story. I hope a very clear story. It's a simple story, yeah? So picture, we're in the third world. There's little children, little children caught in war or whatever. And sometimes something goes wrong. They play with grenades. They lose their fingers and they're handicapable. Yeah. So this is not a nice situation. Of course, if you're born and raised, if you're living in the third world, you have no massive amounts of money to buy a nice artificial limb. Huh? So there has this, uh, has been started this very, very nice idealistic program, Enabling the Future. Enabling, enabling the Future is a uh, website basically with a database and everybody that has a nice uh, artificial limb, could be a hand or a foot or whatever, can upload it to the site. Everybody can download it and can print an artificial limb for one of the children in the third world. Yeah, so basically there's a, a whole library of different kinds of artificial limbs. Some, some are very good, some are not so good, but at least it is something, you know, if you don't have anything, it's always better. I brought one. I already played with it a little bit, of course. This is basically one of the devices. It's very interesting because if you have no fingers, but you have your still your wrist function, you can use it to move this hand. And while doing this, it grabs an object. Yeah. Very simple. You know, this, this lasts, this is a simple device, even in the third world. And they can fix it. You know, if a, a little rubber band breaks, they can repair it, even in the third world. It's a simple device. But of course, it's a pity if you have no, no fingers that you have to offer an, your wrist function being able to have a grip function. So now you have no fingers and now also you cannot move your hand anymore like this because this function is used for the gripping function of this hand. Huh? Okay. It's even worse if you have no hand, for instance, your arm is cut off here. What they do then, they have a device that use the joint of your elbow. While doing this, your hand grabs. It is not so easy if this is your movement and at the same time the hand does this to grab something. But of course, it is better than nothing. So. Today at this, um, let's uh, take the, the next slide. Here's an opportunity. Here's an opportunity to do something right, to make the enabling 3D hand a little bit better. And we are going to do that by making a mechatronic hand. Put some sensor on your body. I don't know where yet. You're going to determine that. Have a little motor in the hand and while activating the system, it will grip. Maybe by blinking your eye, by shaking your foot, I don't know what, but something. So you're getting a box with all kinds of goodies, like Gateso sensors, switches, Arduino, a little book how to program it, and some motors. And the whole idea is that you put it on here, and by doing something, this person 
is able to grip something without bending his elbow or his wrist and his wrist funci function will be, uh, will be available for movement, manipulation of the arm. Wow. This, can we go a lot? No, no, no. <laughs> um, this is where I, uh, I hand the talk to Sashin here because he will go into a little bit more detail how, uh, how about how this works, how this is going to work, or how it could work. Yeah? Cool. So, uh, there you go, Sashin. So, uh, you guys are able to hear me? Yeah? Yeah? So, basically, this is where I come in. So, I'm actually a graduate student working on an ABLE project for, uh, you might have heard of the 3D printing company Ultimaker. So, I'm working on developing, enhancing the design of the uh, enable hand using multi-material printing. While that is there, one aspect of the 3D printed prosthetic is that there is different ways you could make the hands better. First, you could add multi-material applications. You could give thermal sensing. You could give uh, conductive materials as uh, you know uh, as a some sort of capabilities. Like you could operate your phone, or you could do gesture control for devices using RFID tags. That's one way to go about it. The other is to improve the geometry so that the hand is capable of doing more with its design. And finally, the, like Eric said, you could improve the actuation mechanism. Can you make the actuation better so that users don't have to sacrifice one of their very precious degrees of freedom to operate the hand? So that's where the challenge comes in today. But before we go ahead, I'll just give you a brief idea of what Enable is. So this principle of actuating your hand with strings is not new at all. The hand you see, see there, that's made from whalebone in the 1800s. It was made in Australia for a captain who lost his hand. So he was the typical captain hook until he got this hand. Uh, but so basically, in the last couple of years, uh, some uh, makers in the uh, American community, they sort of built up on this idea, said, okay, we have 3D printing. How can we help children and adults all over the world by using this design and making it 3D printable? So that's what you see over here. Uh, now it's a huge community. There are around 3,000 odd volunteers who use their own 3D printers to print hands. And they are linked to people who are missing limbs so that they can develop custom devices based off a portfolio, which I'll show you next. So you could be a part of this group too if you are willing to help out. Uh, so yeah, so th there are different kinds of devices. Uh, what we showed you here, uh, and I have a, a newer version of it, is a wrist-enabled device. Basically, if somebody's missing uh, their digits at the end of their finger, but they still have a usable wrist, you can fit them with one of these devices, and when they rotate their wrist, they get a grip function. Uh, there are people who are missing a wrist. In that case, they get a more uh, elbow-powered or body-powered device. Uh, and finally, there are those who do not have a workable forearm either. They'll need to use a shoulder-powered device, so the motion of their shoulder causes the gripping function. So there are a lot of... Uh, different designs in this portfolio, like you can see here. Uh, where the opportunity lies is in understanding what this device is about. So this is the device I have in my hand. It's called a Phoenix. Uh, the good thing about this device is they've already improved the geometry a bit better. So now when you grip, you can actually hold on to something as compared to this hand, where you can see that you can almost not grip anything at all. So there's already a lot of improvement. Uh, basically, uh, what you guys need to know before you start out on the challenge is that there are different areas where you could work in. There is the finger systems, which are basically, uh, they're held together by pins. And uh, these are tensed together with rubber bands. So you can see that when I release it, it springs back. And then there is this whole fishing wire system here that acts as the tendons. So when you rotate the wrist, because the cable gets pulled, it curls the fingers. Very simple mechanism. Uh, totally be 